Becoming a Muslim Part 1. By Allah's grace, he has made his religion open to anyone who wishes to enter it. There are virtually no obstacles to becoming a Muslim. In order to embrace Islam, there is no need for clergy, baptisms or special ceremonies. In fact, the act that makes one a Muslim is a simple declaration of one's faith. Thus, one only needs state, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Upon stating these sentences, one enters into the beautiful brotherhood-sisterhood of Islam, a brotherhood-sisterhood that stretches from the time of Adam until the last days of this earth. In this chapter, there shall be a discussion of some of the details concerning the testimony of faith. In addition, there shall be a discussion of other actions that are mentioned in connection with the act of becoming a Muslim. This shall be followed by some laws related to one's state before becoming a Muslim. The testimony of faith, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. A person becomes a Muslim by testifying to the truth of the statements, there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Since this is a testimony or bearing witness to the truth of something, it must be a public proclamation, or, in other words, not something hidden within oneself but, instead, conveyed to others a possible exception to this would be when one fears immediate death upon displaying one's Islam. Otherwise, one is expected to openly profess Islam even if he may face some opposition or hardship along the way. Such was the example of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and his companions. Ibn Abu Alis wrote. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has made it absolutely clear that a person is definitely not a believer if it is claimed that he believes in the Prophet, peace be on him, but he does not profess it. With his tongue, even though he can. Ibn Abu Alis, Volume 2, Pages 471. The translation used here is a pre-publication copy of Muhammad Abdul Hansari, Trans, Commentary on the Creed of At-Tahawi by Ibn Abi Alis, Riyadh, Ministry of Higher Education, 2000. For the sake of the page numbering, the published version from Muassasat al rizala will be the work referred to. This profession of the tongue plays a threefold role. It is first a statement of a fact. One is testifying that he recognizes the truthfulness of that statement of faith. This would be analogous to a person giving testimony in a court of law. All he is really stating is that those are the facts that he believes to be true. Second, though, it is statement of commitment to that fact. It is an admission by the person that he intends to adhere to the requirements and guidance of what he has testified to. Third, it is a public proclamation that the individual has now joined the fold of Muslims, accepting all of the rights and responsibilities that such implies. Muslims know that the key to paradise is the statement, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Yet many Muslims simply rely upon this statement and believe that as long as they have said it, nothing will harm them. Because of this mere verbal statement of the testimony of faith, they think they will be granted paradise however, the mere saying of the statement is not sufficient for salvation. In fact, the hypocrites used to say, I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and Yet Allah describes them as liars and says that they shall abide in the lowest abyss of the hellfire. Obviously, there are some conditions for any testimony but in particular for this testimony to be accepted by Allah there are some particular conditions the conditions of the testimony of faith are well known. And discussed in numerous works. See, for example, Hafi ibn Ahmad Hakimi, Mari Jalqbul by Shah Salam al Wusul il il mal yuzul fi al Tawheed, Beirut, Dar al Kitab al Ilmiya, 1983, Volume 1, pages 307 to 315. Abdullah ibn Jibreen, al Shah Adatan, No City or Publisher Given, 1990, pages 77 to 86. This author also presented most of this material on the two parts of the Sha'ada in his The Friday Prayer, Part 2, Kutbars, Iorora, Colorado, Yana, 1994, pages 4-19. The Friday Prayer, Part 3, Kutbars, 2, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Yana, 1995, pages 35-42, and everyone should be extremely concerned over whether his testimony of faith is acceptable to Allah or not. The famous follower Wahib and Munabi was once asked, isn't the statement of, there is none worthy of worship except Allah, the key to paradise? He answered, yes, but every key has ridges. If you come with the key that has the right ridges, the door will open for you. Yet if you do not have the right ridges, the door will not open for you. These ridges are conditions that differentiate Muslims who will benefit from that statement from those who will not benefit from that statement. No matter how many times a day they may have made that statement. 
A study of the verses of the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, will show that there are a number of conditions for the soundness of one's testimony of faith. Again, it is important that every Muslim verify that he is meeting these conditions in his own life with respect to his own testimony of faith. The new convert should consider these conditions concerning his testimony of faith. Preferably, but not necessarily, these would have been explained to him before he undertook the declaration of faith. The first condition is knowledge. One must have the necessary basic understanding of what is meant by the declaration of faith. One must understand what he is affirming and what he is denying in the declaration. This is true for any kind of testimony. When one testifies to something, one must know what it is that he is testifying concerning. Obviously, a testimony about something that one does not have any knowledge of is unacceptable. Allah says in the Quran, Save him who bears witness unto the truth knowingly. Those deities that the idolaters worship instead of Allah are not able to intercede in front of Allah. Except those that testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah whilst understanding their testimony, i.e. Jesus, Ezra and the angels. 4386. Therefore, the basics of the testimony must be understood by the person testifying to it. If he does not understand, for example, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and that all other gods are false gods. Then he does not even have the most elementary understanding of what it is he claims to be testifying to. Such a testimony cannot be considered a proper one that is acceptable to Allah. The second condition is certainty. This is the opposite of doubt and uncertainty. In Islam, in fact, any kind of doubt concerning anything confirmed in the Quran or the Sunnah is equivalent to disbelief. An exception to this is related to the case of ignorance where one is doubtful about something and is not aware that it is proven in the Quran and Sunnah. Once the person then knows that something is definitively confirmed in the Quran or Sunnah, there is no excuse for him to have any doubt about it. One must, in his heart, be absolutely certain of the truth of the testimony of faith. One's heart must not be wavering in any way when one testifies to the truth of. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. Allah describes the true believers as those who have belief in Allah and then their hearts waver not. Allah says, the believers are only those who have faith in Allah and his messenger, and then do not pollute their faith with doubts and strive in the way of Allah with their wealth and souls. Not holding back on anything. Those are the ones truthful in their faith. 4915. Similarly, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, no one meets Allah with the testimony that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. And he has no doubt about that statement, except that he will enter paradise recorded by Muslim. On the other hand, Allah describes the hypocrites as those people whose hearts are wavering. For example, Allah says, Those who ask the Messenger, peace be upon him for permission to stay behind from striving for the sake of Allah not to participate in jihad are the hypocrites who do not believe in Allah and the day of judgment, and whose hearts are full of doubt about the sacred path of Allah. In their doubt they waver, confused, and they are not guided to the truth. 9, 45. The third condition of the testimony of faith is acceptance. If a person has the conditions of knowledge and certainty, this must be followed by acceptance, with the tongue and heart, of whatever that testimony implies. Whoever refuses to accept the testimony of faith with all of its implications, even if he knows that it is true and is certain about its truth, is a disbeliever. This refusal to accept is sometimes due to pride, envy or other reasons. In any case, the testimony is not an acceptable testimony without its unconditional acceptance. This condition also means that the Muslim believes in whatever is stated in the Quran or stated by the Prophet, peace be upon him, without any right to choose what he wants to believe and what he wants to reject. Allah says in the Quran, then you broke the contract, some of you killing others, and forcing a group of them to leave their homes, assisted by their enemies, unjustly and with aggression. Then if prisoners came to you in the hands of enemies, you pay their ransom and rescue them from their captivity, even though making them leave their homes was forbidden to you. How is it that you believe in some of what is in the Torah about the ransom of captives, and reject some of it, about not killing each other and driving people from where they live? For those of you who do that, there is only humiliation in this life and the most severe torment in the afterlife. Allah knows what you do, in fact, He is fully aware, and He will hold you to account. 285. Allah has also said, It is not correct for a believing man or woman when Allah and His Messenger decide a matter for them that they have a choice in accepting or rejecting it. Whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has clearly deviated from the straight path. 
3336. The fourth condition is submission and compliance. This implies the actual physical enactment by deeds. This is one of the main meanings of the word Islam itself, the submission to the will and commands of Allah. Allah commands this in the Quran, return to your Lord by repentance and righteous actions and submit to him, before the punishment comes to you on the day of resurrection. Then you will not find anyone from your idols and families to help you by rescuing you from the punishment. 39, 54. Allah has made it a condition of faith that one submits to the command of Allah and his messenger. Allah says, what these hypocrites claim is not true. Allah swears by himself that they will not have real faith until they refer for judgments to the messenger, during his lifetime, and to the sacred law after his death. In every disagreement between them, and are happy with the messenger's ruling, without feeling hatred about it, or doubting it, and accepting it completely and faithfully, outwardly and inwardly. 465. This does not mean that the true believer never falls into sin. Indeed, true believers do commit sins. But as long as they recognize that what they did is not correct and it is inconsistent with their obligation of submitting to Allah, then they have not violated the soundness of their testimony. The fifth condition is truthfulness as opposed to hypocrisy and dishonesty. This means that when one says the testimony of faith, he is saying it honestly, actually meaning it. He is not lying when it comes to his testimony of faith or simply trying to deceive or fool anyone. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No one bears testimony to there being no one worthy of worship save Allah, sincerely from his heart. Except that Allah makes the hellfire forbidden for him. Recorded by Al-Bukhari. The sixth condition is purity or making this testimony of faith solely for the sake of Allah. One must not do it for any other reason or anyone else's sake. In this manner, the meaning of purity is the opposite of ascribing partners with Allah. One becomes and remains Muslim solely to serve Allah, to avoid his anger and punishment and to gain his mercy and reward. Allah says in the Quran, O Messenger, I revealed the Quran to you which comprises the truth, so all of its news are true and all of its rulings are just. So worship Allah, declaring him to be one, directing all of your acts of worship to only him, 39-2. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, Allah has forbidden for the hellfire anyone who says, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And says so desiring the face, and pleasure, of Allah. Recorded by Muslim. The seventh condition is love. That is, the believer loves the testimony of faith, he loves in accordance with the testimony, he loves its implications and requirements and he loves those who act and strive on its basis. This is a necessary condition of the testimony of faith. If a person makes the testimony but does not love it and what it stands for, then, in fact, his faith is not complete. It is not the faith of a true believer. If he has no love for this testimony or if he actually feels hatred for it, he has negated his testimony. The true believer puts no one as an equal to Allah in his love. Allah says in the Quran, even with these clear signs, there are people who take others besides Allah as their gods, considering them equal to him, and loving them as they love Allah. Those who have real faith love Allah more than those others love their gods, they do not worship anyone besides him. And they love him in hardship and in ease, while those others only love their gods when things are going well, when things go badly, they call on Allah alone. If the wrongdoers could see with their own eyes the punishment that waits in the afterlife for those who worship others with Allah and commit sins, then they would know that all power belongs to Allah alone and that he is firm in punishing those who stubbornly rebel. If they saw this, then they would not worship anyone with Allah. 2 to 165. Elsewhere Allah says, Say O messenger to the believers, if their fathers, sons, brothers, wives and relatives, the wealth which they have gained, the trade which they want to grow and fear its reduction, and the houses which they like to live in are more beloved to them than Allah and his messenger and striving for his sake. Then they should wait for the punishment that Allah will send down upon them. Allah does not make it easy for those who disobey him to do actions which please him. 924. An eighth condition is that the person who states the testimony must deny every other object of worship. Although that is clear in the words of the testimony of faith, it does not seem clear to everyone who makes that testimony. Therefore, it needs to be mentioned explicitly. In Surah al-Baqarah, Allah reminds Muslims of this important aspect of the testimony. The testimony of faith is not merely an affirmation but it is both an affirmation and a negation. 
Allah states, No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from falsehood. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions and will reward them accordingly. 2. 256. The ninth condition is that the Muslim adheres to the testimony of faith until he dies. This is a must if the testimony is to mean anything in the hereafter. One cannot rest on his laurels of what he may have done in the past. No, indeed, the declaration of faith must be his banner until death. Allah says in the Quran, O you who have faith in Allah and follow his messenger, be mindful of Allah as you have been commanded, by following what he instructs you to do. And by staying away from what he prohibits you from doing. And be thankful for his favor, holding firmly to the religion he has given you, so that when you die, you die surrendering in devotion to him. 3 to 102. Finally, the testimony does not have to be in the Arabic language or with specific terms but it must be very clear as to the exact meaning and purport of what the person is saying. In a hadith, some people embraced Islam by saying, Sabana, meaning they had entered the faith of those who were called Sabiyah, which was a term of the people of ignorance for the Muslims, 